a little grassy. I just spilled it. Ooh, this smells like perfumey. Oh God. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Mystic Rain here. And today we are going to be doing an unboxing of the Witch's Moon Box for the month of October. And before I get into this, okay, it's been two months since I've done this because the last box for me was incredibly problematic. And anybody that has watched the last video knows that I had to take a bit of a break from No Witch's Moon. I was so upset. But it is October, which means it is witch bitch season. And so I do expect better things to be in this box. And so fingers crossed that we're going to get those better things. And so first things first, the box is a little bit weighty this month. I always love a heavy box because in my head, I create, I equate heaviness with lots of stuff. So initially opening the box, this is what it looks like. Going straight in. So let's see what the theme is for this month. So we've got, heck, I can't read it. All these fonts. So we've got Keeper of Keys. As we walk into the sacred season of Samhain, we carry with us a deep and sync feeling of gratitude for the many lessons that we have already learned in just these passing months. We are prepared and proactive in searching for many answers and perceptions to questions that resonate within our current reality. During this time, we have been called to work with Hecate inspired by and humbled by the wisdom that resides within our energies and vibrations during a time of our deepest connection we travel within the unveiled dark caves of past and present upon the crossroads of decisions and unknown truths in this very special and sacred collection we work with the goddess traveling to depths within ourselves where she may shine light and guide us towards the wonderful work of the dark path of the year so my oracle card is creative power release your al alchemical alchemical hmm. release your alchemical energy into the world and it's a woman here and she's pregnant very empress like energy very creation energy creative energy it's so interesting because i definitely this month feel super deep into that so we are actually headed into scorpio season artwork for spell by the way guys and there'll be a picture somewhere in over here somewhere and um artwork about the goddess and again i will insert a picture somewhere over here about this too but we are headed into scorpio season season of transformation so a lot of you guys are going to be feeling all of these emotions bubbling to the surface but it's going to be really deep dark emotions. You are going to start experiencing the rehashing of childhood trauma and issues from your past that you may have thought you was previously resolved, or you may have just completely forgot about. All of those things are going to start bubbling to the surface and the universe or spirit is going to be asking you, what do you actually want to do with these things? And so you are actually going to be confronted with a lot of opportunities to heal past wounds and traumas because we are going into the season of transformation. So keep that in mind if you guys have been getting a little emotional. I know you guys have been getting a little emotional because, well, to put it frankly, I can feel it. So first thing I saw is the torches of ass, ash. Incense. Ooh, this smells like perfumey. Oh, God. I mean, honestly, not the biggest fan of this smell. It smells like, um, like your grandmother's perfume. Like if anybody has a grandma, particularly a grandma that goes to church, there's a very distinct church lady old perfume smell that's what it is for me <laughs> okay so the torches of ash ritual incense stick as you light and let this sm as you light and let smoke this wonderful ritual incense visualize the ever-flowing ash falling from hectic's torch 
This specific idea personifies your ability to feel assured during your divin divinatory rituals. The sacred nights leading to the most honest and spirit opening time of the year are personal to you and your growth within the coming months. Do not take these moments lightly as they shape and sharpen the tools that you are able to call upon on a path ahead. And then we've got some herbs. We've got some yerba, yerba santa, some dandelion root. And then we also have some poppy seeds, all of which I don't actually think I have in my little apothecary area. So let's see what they do. So for the yerba santa or the yerba santa, also known as a sacred herb, it is a necessary ingredient to keep close during times of deep div divination or transport, crush and use to create incense to burn during your rituals or simply place upon your altar during the darker upcoming nights. It will be your protector and assist and assist you in opening your intuition or third eye to potential messages that are meant for you. This is incredibly interesting because me personally, I have now the ability to in body channel, which I have not had before. Um, I could channel messages, but I was not an in body channel. And it's really interesting because there's a lot of people activating right now. And so for the people whose purpose is specifically to be here in service to you all, right? Those people then have to go and then upgrade to further assist the ones that are currently activating, right? It's all energy, it's all frequency. And it's really interesting that this is this particular box for this month because I feel like I kind of need it right now because my intuitive capabilities have increased tenfold. So that's really interesting. Um, let's see. Dandelion root. A wonderful root to use during Samhain rituals is, a, is the root of a dandelion. Crush the roots and place within steaming water. Placing your bowl on your ritual altar or table, allowing steam to rise. This very steam will assist you in calling upon ancestors, guides, or in this very specific case, Hecate, during the time of the thinning of the veil. And then we've got poppy seed. Although commonly used within sachets for love, we have included poppy seeds with this collection to bring good luck to you and your journey within during these sacred nights. Carry a bag of poppy seeds with you during this month to allow these stars to align in your favor as you prepare for the coming rituals. I do want to address really quickly on a thinning of the veil. So we are coming up on Halloween, October 31st. And this is the thinning of the veil. The idea is that this is a time of year when the veil is the thinnest. And so connection to the a spirit is a lot stronger. It's easier to perceive them around this time, right? Which is why, you know, you see things like jack-o'-lanterns or scary faces or masks, all thought to be the things that ward off evil spirits that maybe have come through the veil. Um, what I do want to say and let you guys know is that the veil is already thin. It's already incredibly thin. Um, I personally do not feel that it will be thinnest on Halloween because it has been very, very thin all year. The reason for this is simply because the world and collective consciousness is going through a transition and it's ascending. And the world is also dealing with a pandemic, which means we're dealing with massive amounts of deaths, which means there's a lot of soul crossover, right? A lot of spirits moving between worlds. And so ancestors, guides, angels are actually in the process of helping those souls cross over. And so because of that, it's easier for them to just stay here while the planet ascends, but then also people transition, right? Or spirits or souls transition. Because of this, the veil, ha the, the veil has been thin all year. And I suspect there's going to be a number of you guys that are going to watch this video who have been feeling it, who have maybe been a home alone, and maybe you feel like you've been sensing a presence, or maybe you've been feeling like you've been feeling a presence, or maybe you've perceived it out of the corner of your eye. It is because it's actually happening because the veil is already thin. What's happening is that Spirit, in general, is here assisting. This planet does actually have intervention happening 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So I just want to touch on that for the thinning of the veil because the veil is already thin. I say that to say is that if you were saving any rituals that you wanted to use specifically for Halloween because you thought that maybe it would be strongest that day, I would actually argue that you can do it now. You can do it whenever because the veil is already thin and you can do it after Halloween as well too, because again, the veil is already thin. So food for thought. All right. 
Next thing we've got is the candle. So we've got our spell candle here, and then we've got our spell. So let's see. I don't always like to open the candles because sometimes they've got, they've been dressed. They've got herbs stuck to them and stuff, but it is a black candle. And black candle with some purple glitter and a key that is stuck to it. And let's see what this is. So we've got, we have hand rolled and anointed this candle with the intentions of honoring Hecate. Surrounded by the essence of magic, this very special candle is for you to burn during the darkness of night while calling upon Hecate for guidance or to simply give gratitude for her protection during your ongoing search of knowledge and understanding. Placed upon this candle sits a key. We would kindly recommend removing this key, placing it near your candle as it burns. This token resembles the sacred keys that Hecate holds, only available for those that may be worthy of accepting wisdom from beyond the veil. After you have burned this candle, place the key within your Hecate box as a symbol of recognition. So I'm assuming there's a box in the box. Before you begin, be sure to create the energy that surrounds you. This can include cleaning, cleansing, and setting the tone for the purpose ritual. We always recommend being comfortable with your space so that you may create the most accurate and authentic energy following your intuition when creating um, an altar or workspace. So one thing I want to address when it comes to deity in this particular situation is Hecate. So I do not... Um, work with the, any of the deities that um, are suggested in the witch's moon box simply because it's not my culture it's not my faith i'm a black woman i don't work with celtic goddesses or gods i just don't what i do do is use the items in the box as inspiration for my own practice and my own magic so if you feel like hey that looks really cool and everything but i don't particularly resonate with that deity you don't have to particularly use that deity you say thank you you give grace and you use the tools that come in the box in order to apply it to what you maybe you feel that you more closely resonate with or deity that you resonate with now what i can say is that every culture has a deity that covers the same thing so in this particular box you're dealing with heke so go to whatever culture and whatever deities that you feel comfortable working with and find the equivalent god or goddesses that govern that thing and then you can transform the box to do that now one thing that i don't really use from the witch's moon box are the candles i do not burn the candles if the candle was originally meant for a deity that i don't work with because that is not of my culture right so um i i keep them i have a bunch of them because i'm still trying to figure out the best way to get rid of them i go back and forth between maybe giving it away to somebody that maybe resonates more with that deity but then what happens is i have so many of them that i can't remember what candle was supposed to do what and i don't want to give somebody to, to a candle to burn and they're burning a candle that was meant for something else. So it gets a little bit complicated. But um, another thing is I feel like some of you guys are just going to say, okay, well, you don't want to work with that deity. That's fine. Why can't you still use the candle? The reason why I don't still use the candle is because the candle was created with that specific intention. So the intention to be worked with that particular deity already exists in the candle, which is why I don't repurpose the candle. Right? So when you do candle magic, I always say make sure it's a fresh candle. This candle is no longer fresh. It's been imbued with magic already with a very specific, a particular intention. So this will not be a candle that I will burn. I will leave it fully intact and I probably will kind of collect with all the other ones that I also do not burn. But just in case any, you know, for anyone that was curious about that, um, that is what you can do. You just take the tools in the box to add to your own magical practice. Um, but if you don't resonate with what you're being told to do with the tool, but you resonate with doing something else with it, that's also okay. So the Keeper of Keys candle did come with a spell here. I will read it to you just in case you are interested and you want to kind of duplicate this at home. So it is the Keeper of Keys. And here we go. On dark nights and lifted veils, I stand upon the seer scale. Of truth be told, of truth be sought, of wisdom found in knowledge lost. Oh, Hecate. Mother of darkness, goddess of illumination, I ask from within my yearning soul to take my hand on this winning, winding road to unlock seals, to reveal, to bestow. A hectic, I call to you, guardian of the great fate. I ask for your divine guidance. 
The keeper of keys, I stand with earnest intent. I, as a student of sacred decree, my deep gratitude for all that is received. So mote it be. So there will be a photo of this somewhere in the, somewhere around here somewhere. Pause the video and then read it yourself. Now, about spells, sometimes you get a spell and you don't resonate with it or you don't like the words or you want to change a word or whatever. You can do that too, right? So if you feel like, oh, this is a really good template for something else that I want to use, use it as a template, okay? Use everything that you can. Magic, parts of it, can be repurposed. You just have to be a little resourceful. Okay, next, we've got a crossroads bath salt here. Mm. Ooh, this sounds nice. Very sort of citry, citrusy, a little grassy. I just spilled it. <laughs> Done worse. So, where are we here? Crossroads Sacred Soul. We have created this crossroads sacred salt with the intention of providing you the time to ponder the many roads that stand before you on the sacred crossroad. During these deeply reflective times, it is so important for you to be honest with yourself regarding your past, your current situation, and where your path may lead. As this is a powerful pre-ritual meditation, we recommend documenting any messages that you may receive while soaking in this sacred mi mixture. So... What did I say earlier in this video about how a lot of you guys are going to be just kind of emotional because there are going to be things bubbling up to the surface from your path or from your past. This whole month is going to be like that. It's going to be a little rough and a little emotional for those of you guys that haven't yet prepared yourself. So what I like about this salt is that you are making the decision to be proactive in that journey because it's going to happen regardless it's going to kind of happen to everyone old patterns are going to kind of resurface and you're going to be noticing that you're going to be presented with a lot of similar moments to past events right it's almost going to be it's almost going to feel like you're going to be tested where you're going to be in a situations and you're going to be like this happened whenever it happened and you're going to be like i feel like it's testing me because it's happening again and the idea is that it is and it's meant for you to make a new decision on what you are now going to do. The idea is that you've gained all of this wisdom. Are you going to repeat that same mistake and then have to deal with that karma cycle again? Or are you going to make a different choice this time? A more elevated ascended choice so you can then close that karmic cycle and move forward with your life. And so this box is like is helping you do that. So this crossroads, you are at a crossroads. When you hit, when you get hit with that emotional response and that kind of trigger to um, a bubbling emotions that are happening inside of you, you are at a choice point, right? That spirit going, okay, so take this new wisdom that you have. What are you now going to do about it? So I like this because this gives you the ability to make the decision to be proactive in that journey instead of having it hit you all at once when you're not ready. Okay, so we've got a tumble stone here. Mm. Mm. What is this? Obsidian? Um, it is black tourmaline, tumbled black tourmaline. This is quite interesting. I've actually never seen tourmaline. I have a bunch of it, but it's all raw, I, or I'm trying to... No, I don't see it out at the moment. It's all raw. Tourmaline is very brittle. Um, so I've actually never seen a tumbled one where it's hard and it's refined and it's just a rock. Quite interesting. Um, we have included a wonderful tumbled black tourmaline within its collection to protect you on your deep journeys this season. For new practitioners, this stone can be very helpful, protecting you from attachments that may want to prey on those that have doubts. Keep this stone close to rituals where you may have invited guidance into your life. Let's talk about this for a second. For new practitioners... This stone can be very helpful from protecting you from any attachments that may want to prey on the, on those that have doubts. So when we say attachments, what is that? Those are energetic attachments, right? And so for some people, it can manifest in the form of entity, but it's really just energetic attachments. Energetic attachments can be negative thought forms, 
right? So have you ever been just really afraid? And then that fear turns into deeper and darker fear, which then turns into deeper and darker fear. Because what's happening is fear is probably the most powerful frequency at the lowest end of the frequency scale, right? Love is the most powerful one on the top one. Because it's so powerful, it has the ability to create energetic forms and then duplicate itself. And then it grows and grows and grows. And then sometimes the attachment to you is you, right? People say, I got something on me. I got something on me. A lot of times I think you have on you is you. It's an energetic form that you've created that's attached to you because it's actually part of you. It's part of yours. And so when you are getting into this space, and I'm going to make videos on grounding and protection and, and what to do for new practic practitioners, if that is something that you're actually concerned about, um, you have to remember that it all is energy, right? And because it is all, it's all energy, you have the ability to choose which energy you want to work with. And you have to remember that like energy attracts like energy. So if you are a negative person or you are doing negative things or you are participating in negative behaviors that exist at a lower frequency band, all of those things are going to be attracted to you, right? Because like energy attracts like energy. If you are doing things of the light and being of the light, then things of the light is what are attracted to you and those things come to you. So if you live in a place of fear and if you live in a place of doubt, then you're going to get all the things that also live in a place of fear and live in a place of doubt. I'll put another video up so you know how to fix it. It's very easy. Don't be, don't worry about it. Okay, next. Okay, so we have an oil here. Um, it's a Hecate oil. Can't see, but there's definitely some herbs floating in it. Mm, I don't know what this smells like. Let's see. We have created this oil with the intention of enhancing your connection with energy and the vibrations of Hecate. This oil is made for you to anoint sanctuary or to anoint candles in pre preparation for ritual work. We commonly use this oil to place upon our forehead before working with Hecate. It is vital that we drop preconceived judgments about what we think we may know so that we are able to accept new information, guided information, and inspired ideas. We have enchanted this oil with anise, patchouli, jasmine, and cedarwood oils and have included mugwort and patchouli as well. Inside your oil, you will find a Lemurian quartz said to personify oneness with your aura. And now we're getting to the big stuff. Okay, let's get to the box because we all know that we've got a box. We've got a little, oh. So this is the box. It's kind of cool, right? It looks like a little door, like a doorway. And then on the sides, we've got the triple goddess. Let's see, it's quite sturdy. Let's see. So it's a brawn box. Um, this very specific time of year is sacred to those that are connected with witchcraft in any way or simply intuitive to natural cycle, cycles and spirit connections. As we come closer to the last day of October, we start to feel more confident with our ability to connect with our ancestors, spirit guides, or those that are called to walk beside us on our path. This very year, a time of decisions and deep contemplation regarding our present circumstances and what may lie ahead is the forefront of our mind and spirit. We are called to work with Hecate during this time as we resonate so deeply with her absolute aspects of wisdom. It is important to know that Hecate communicates and is realized in many different ways to almost everyone. As with the most sacred, ancient, and magical practices, they they are on a very personal and individualistic level. This is the very reason why we are so passionate about these sacred paths as they are deeply tailored to each person's desires, understandings, and intentions. Blah, 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 blah. She guides the uh, she she guides us and portrays the deep and ancient knowledge that resides within us each year if we allow ourselves to be open. She is called and considered the guardian of the great gates, the illuminator, the queen of witches, the highest priestess for all of us, the keeper of keys. There are many stories of her ability to provide guidance by torchlight for, for, for Persephone, blah, 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 blah. It's a lot of words. 
This is commonly a very personal deep traveling, blah, 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 blah. During each year. All right. So I guess it's just a box. It was just really this long blurb about um, deity, but um, it's, it's not really saying that there's anything in particular to do with it. Um, what I would do, because I actually quite like the box. And because the box isn't, it's not like a candle, because this is a candle, I believe they, this is a hand-rolled candle, which means there's a lot of work that goes through, right? All of the, part of the magic is the physical working of a, of, of, of a product, right? Like, this is wax, you know, there's a lot of intention and magic that has already gone through it, so there's not much I can really do with it now. However, the key is something that is always very magical. A key always has magical purposes. So what I'll do is eventually take the key off and then I'll have the box and then I'm going to sage the crap out of it. I'm going to sage the crap out of it to clear it of energy because this is something that you can actually use. And I actually really like the box. I kind of just want to put my tumble stones in it. If I'm honest, I really like the box. It's a nice box. I'm going to keep the box. Okay. And then the last thing in here is also the box. <laughs> so listen to the box. <laughs> I really thought there was a whole nother thing. I was like, oh, it's an open box. I was like, maybe it's just like symbolic. Maybe it's just an open box. No, it's a whole box. I like the box, honestly. I like the box. It has this on it. Um, and it's a nice, durable, sturdy box. It's, it's a triple goddess box. Um, the energy of the triple goddess is actually very powerful. I'm going to keep the box. I'm just going to cleanse it really, really well. And I'm going to take the key off the candle and cleanse that really, really well as well, because I can use that for other things. And so I'm just going to repurpose a lot of things that are in here. Um, I do like the items in here, but like I said before, and this isn't an issue for me because I do this with all of the witches moons, the witches moons use Celtic deities, which is something that I know. And it's fine because again, you know, the creators are going with what they understand and what's culturally relevant for them. And so, but I just want to put it out there for maybe other people that like the items in the box, but maybe don't resonate with the deities that I talk about here that all you have to do is find the equivalent deity in the culture that you do resonate with and then use the box as ideas and inspiration to then go perform your own rituals. So um, that is the end of this video. If you guys like what you see, subscribe to this channel and I will see you guys soon.